What's going on, Z-Pack? It's your boy, z Dog MD. Today, we have a really super secret special show because we're talking about video games. Ah! I'm like fanboying because today, we're going to talk with the CEO and founder of a company called Level X. It's Level EX. It's a company that makes high production value, amazing medically related video games for healthcare professionals. These are world-class video games that also happen to train you in important skills, whether it's in interventional cardiology, gastroenterology, pulmonology, all this really cool stuff. So I am fanboying already and I haven't even started the interview. And we're talking with CEO and founder Sam Glassenberg, who although coming from a medical legacy, has turned his passion for video game development, he's an Emmy award-winning video game developer, into something that we in healthcare are gonna find very, very, very precious and very cool. Sam Glassenberg, welcome to the show. Great to be here. Man, so I'm excited, I gotta say, because I'm a big video game nerd, like back in the Pong days, Atari 2600, I had an Apple IIe, some of my homies had the 2C, which was whack, because the keyboard was like built in, it's just weird, but, uh, Always machine. always been a video game. So when I heard about Level X and what you guys are doing, making video games for healthcare professionals, I was like, this man needs to be on our show. I mean, how did this all start for you in the first place? So in two words, by accident. Um, so I spent my career in the video game business. So I spent my career making video games. I started out at Lucasfilm, LucasArts, what? making Star Wars games. Did you ever meet Lucas? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we had... Uh, there were events at the ranch, and he was very into like education and filmmaking and video games. And all I, I'm things, sorry so. for people on the podcast that are listening. I'm going to walk over there right now. <laughs> I, I'm just going to touch him, okay? I'm just going to touch him because that means I'm one degree of separation from George Lucas. Okay, and that's not that's not creepy at all. No, um, no. only so vaguely. You aren't you one degree with the whole with the whole Doc Vader thing? Doesn't that? I'm just one degree away from getting sued by Lucasfilms. Like, that's the thing, right? Well, so we'll have to, that conversation will have to stop there, I guess, <laughs> before the lawyers start. Exactly. Um, so you were at Lucasfilm. So yeah, so I started out at LucasArts. I was an animator, so I would fly spaceships for Star Wars games. Oh, um, my gosh. Between, it was when, right before episode two came out. So, wow. Yeah, so Which was basically a video game. Basically. Yeah. They're all, it's all this, it's all a video game universe. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, so I, I started out there, uh, spent many years at Microsoft uh, leading a team um, called DirectX. It basically builds the technology that makes video games look real. Dude, I used to, you led the team that did DirectX? We did, yeah, it was, it was we did the graphics side. Wow. Um, so we made, you know, we figured out how to make the video games, you know, look incredibly realistic. That was that was the idea. Back when I was playing like Doom and all those kind of games on a PC. Yeah, so it was a little it was right when sort of Windows gaming started taking yeah. off and you would switch from like Doom and DOS to like playing on Windows that was all DirectX and then Xbox was all built on DirectX technology. So all the technology to make video games look real on Xbox, PC, and eventually it makes its way onto your phone. That's insane. I'm like fanboying right now internally. Like if I could do anything other than medicine, I would just be in the video game. It's business. a lot of fun. We yeah. have a lot of fun. My job, my job at Microsoft was basically to figure out how do we build the matrix? How do we make, <laughs> how do we make video games it. look I real? I knew Bill Gates was trying to build a robot apocalypse. Yes. Well, without the, without the robots and without the apocalypse, oh. I guess they are working on some, on some AI stuff, but, right, right, uh, right. but yeah. So figuring out how do we make video games look real, ultra realistic, make it so an artist can envision any universe they want and the technology doesn't get in the way. Well, so what's interesting, though, is that you come from a medical family, and so this starts to bleed into what you're doing now. Right. So basically, I've had a you know fun and successful career in the video games business, and this has made me a little bit of the black sheep of the family. So I come from a long line of doctors. Uh, my grandfather was a famous doctor. My parents are both doctors. My wife is a doctor, aunts, uncles, everybody's doctors. And I'm the uh, disgrace that uh, didn't go to medical school. Uh, so wait, so what did you tell your parents? Like, I'm going to play video games for a living? Right. So went in, went into the video games industry. And um, I think throughout that time, everybody was hoping that I would just give it up and eventually, you know, get a real job and go and go to medical school like I'm supposed to. Um, didn't happen. Didn't happen. A um, lot of terrible stories along the way. Um, I can imagine. I can imagine my dad, me telling him I'm going to design video games. And he would be like, you're going to play Mario Kart for a living. 
Uh, are you uh, are you <laughs> intellectually disabled? What's wrong with you? <laughs> you know how it's like there's there's in you know there's medicine and then there's everything else. Um, in the yeah no you're you're a, you're a doctor a lawyer an engineer or a failure. Well that's and, the immigrant and, and you know and engineering isn't really necessarily even up there mm. um, depending on the community that you come from. Correct. Correct. The uh, so yeah I mean back back in two thousand six. I accepted a technical Emmy on behalf of my team's work at Microsoft, sort of pushing the cutting edge of interactive entertainment. Wow! Um, so it was a, it was a, you know, I thought it would be a big deal. I called home to let my parents know an like, Emmy, a technical, technical Emmy, techni- technical Emmy. Sounds it's legit. It's not the, it's not the one, it's not the one you, they show on TV. It's the one they do beforehand. Wow! So, uh, but it's the same, the same statue. And so, uh, and so I, I called home. Uh, to let my parents know, because, you know, you're going to be walking down the red carpet. It's kind of a big deal. My mom gets on the phone. She says, uh, I tell her, she says, you have to tell your father. Without, I mean, he had no idea this was coming because it wasn't announced yet. Without skipping a beat, he goes, Sam, that's very nice. But in this family, we only recognize Nobel Prizes. He goes, you're not yet 30 years old. You can still go to medical school. I'll pay for it. You won an Emmy, and your dad's like, "But, but it's not. That's med- it's That's not medicine. medicine. I'm, not I'm medicine. glad you had that experience. I'm glad I wasn't the only one. So, and I, I even did medicine, and it wasn't good enough. Really? Yeah. What, what What would have been good enough? Well, good enough would have been again like becoming a super specialty surgeon who, mm. you know, just operated all day. Now, now what I do, my dad's just like, "You're not even alive to me." Like, well, I don't understand it. And yet, and yet, he takes pictures of the Fresno Bee articles <laughs> and, and that are like maybe you, maybe you can talk about this on your show and i'm like i already did three episodes on burnout but look burnout so as it turns out right taking a little bit of advice from my from my father ended up being very fortuitous yeah. so so with level x so what happened was back in uh Back in 2012, my dad, he's an anesthesiologist, Uh and he goes, all right, Sam, he sort of gave up on the medical school thing, and he goes, all right, Sam, time to put all this video game nonsense to good use. Make me something to train my colleagues to do a fiber optic intubation. He told you that? This is yes. Oh, So he's like, so he was was like, all right, time to, let's put this to good use. Let's see what we can get out of this, and let's see if we can, you know, help the world. Always practical. And so, very practical. So he said, uh, look, you know, you're familiar with fiber optic intubation. You only do it on, you know, rare and difficult cases. Mm -hmm. So even experienced anesthesiologists might, you know, have, you know, might not perform so well at it. Don't have enough numbers under their belt. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You haven't done enough procedures, depending on the institution that you're at. Right. Um, and uh, and it's very, you know, it's tricky to learn, but it's highly visual. Yeah. So he's like, just make me something that'll train them on their iPads. I don't want to have to drag anybody to a training center, to a sim center. Got it. So I sat down for three weekends with um, some video game technology, and I threw something together. And it was not very good. Um, and I uploaded it to the app store basically because I was busy running a video game company at the time and didn't have time to install it on his friends iPads one by one so I'm like here's the link they can download it leave me alone Um, didn't think about it again and then two years later in 2014 he called me up and he said hey Sam how many people downloaded that thing and I go I have no idea I will check for you I will check how many of your friends downloaded your game um, and I went and I looked and we had a hundred thousand oh. doctors <laughs> nurses and airway specialists <laughs> worldwide who'd been playing this thing this was just a side thing you did for your dad totally totally wow. had no idea and and at that point I googled it and I discovered they'd done efficacy studies on it that showed it improved physician performance you, and you had no idea. No idea. This is, no idea. Oh my god! I was I was busy, you know, building video games for Hollywood movies. Didn't think twice about it. And then all of a sudden, I realized this, and we go, "Oh, well, this is interesting. Like, clearly, there's demand for something like this." Wow! So an unmet need clearly was staring you in the face. Exactly. And exactly. an integration with your family's uh, legacy and dynasty. Of <laughs> right. Yeah, I don't know about dynasty. And, and well, it sounds but, like, uh, it sounds epic. But uh, but yeah, so we've. Um, uh, so yeah, so after that, um, put together a team of top video game developers from around the country and uh, making video games for doctors. And your company's called Level X. We're called Level X. Why, how'd the word that name come from? Uh, it's a play on words. So you've got, you know, you've got expert level, right? So expert level physician, expert level surgeon, expert level medical professional. Um, and you've got this sort of level angle, like a level in a video game. Right. Makes sense. So and, and And so is the idea that these games 
create a sense of play and engagement on a mobile device, say primarily, so that people when they're in their downtime in the lounge or whatever can actually play these games and improve their skills at the same time. That's the idea. So you can jump in at any time during your day and play some of the most difficult, challenging, rare, complex cases in the specials. Okay, now I, we could talk about this for hours and we might do that after, but I wanna see the demo. Because sure. I think when people see this, they'll say, oh, this, you just have to see it. So I'm gonna walk over there. Okay. Yeah, like they say, level X is like the matrix. You can't be told what level X is. You have to see it for yourself. <laughs> um, and once you see it, you'll see how deep the rabbit hole goes. All right, Sam, show me this Show me this thing. Uh, so here we're gonna demo a few different applications. I'm gonna start with uh, gastroenterology. Um, so this is GastroX. Um, and what we have here, these are all available for free in the App Store. You can just go and download them. And what we have are dozens of rare, difficult, uh, complex cases, but they're real cases that have been submitted by doctors all over the country. As, as you can see, some of them you can earn CME for. Um, the rest are just here for fun. Wow, so you can actually get continuing education credit too, you, playing video games. Correct. This is uh, the only video. This is the only video game you can earn. These are the only video games you can earn CME credit. It's for, like for my playing these my games. prayers were heard. <laughs> it's like they were heard. So so and and these were submitted by doctors. The cases. Correct. And so difficult cases that you want to practice. Uh, and, and it's free to download on the App Store. Correct. Awesome. Correct. So anyone can try this and should try this. Um, so here, this is a, so we're just going to jump into one case. So this is a, a routine polypectomy. Got it. And we'll tilt it a little. There oh, we go. Sure. Perfect. There we go. So this is a, this is a routine polypectomy. Oh, look at that right? colon. So here, right, this is a totally interactive virtual patient. Now, what do I mean by that? So um, this, you know, this isn't just a video. This is a totally interactive virtual patient. Everything squishy, everything moves. I can grab anything anywhere it all behaves realistically any tool that i use right and this is just running on my this runs down to an iphone 5s right this runs on whatever iphone you have uh or android device and it's super fast super smooth and it, i'm telling you guys you can't see it as well as i can this is legit look at that snare so here we'll come in and, uh, like I said, routine polypectomy, you know, this is what we call a hidden object game, right? You got to find all the precancerous polyps that, you know, hide in uh, different crevices and whatnot. Um, and so here we'll come in with my forceps and remove this polyp. But uh, what I don't realize is hiding underneath this polyp is a blood vessel. So when I remove it, I trigger a bleed. A meter wow. inside the body. So now we've actually got this, you know, bleeding scenario ah! going on. <laughs> Make it, it gets stop. pretty intense. Make right. it stop. So the blood will pool and it will fill. And as you can see, as I move the tissue around, it's all there. So what do I do? So I can take my I can take my water jet, right, and start, you know, spraying some water, try to, you know, maybe spray the source of the wound. But all that does is dilute the blood. Right. Eventually it all just comes back bleeding. So now we've got to decide uh, what we want to do here. So Z Dog, should we use uh, epinephrine or argon plasma? Oh man, I like the laser. The laser. Yeah. The, the ar right. Argon plasma. The argon plasma. All right. So here we go. So we'll come in with our argon plasma coagulator. You may file when ready. And then we will, we will cauterize the tissue. So there we go. So now, as you can see, bleeding stopped. We've cauterized this, uh, we've cauterized this bleed. Now I can continue to go through and capture, you know, find the other four polyps that are hiding somewhere. Or again, it's a totally I'm interactive. Keep you tilted. There it, we go. Oh, it's a totally yeah. interactive virtual patient. So I can just keep cauterizing until eventually I finish. Case failed. Case. Case failed. Because well, you overcaught it? I caused too much damage. So you, you perforated damage. the colon with we didn't, two We didn't perforate yet, but we did. We just caused too much damage. We consider this a failure. Okay, can I tell you that was the most fun thing I've ever seen in my life? Like, I would just be cauterizing the crap out of everything in the colon all day, every day. Well, good thing the Hippocratic Oath doesn't apply to virtual patients. Or does it? I think they're conscious. <laughs> I think they're conscious. That's, that is a much, okay, that that was is amazing. much deeper AI discussion. So, um, so, yeah, so I've got, you know, just dozens of these cases. I'm going to show you an example in pulmonology. Yeah. Um, uh, so this is Palmex. Uh, this launched last year. Um, and same idea, just dozens of interesting, difficult, challenging cases mm. um, in pulmonology. Great. And so what, what makes you choose the specialty? Is it basically the need? It's, it's the need and the demand. The demand, right? yeah. So actually now today, so one of the reasons why we're doing cardiology next, we have over 3,000 cardiologists that are currently playing our other games. Wow. Like they're removing polyps from people's colons and, you know, removing, um, 
yeah, removing foreign objects from people's lungs, waiting for us to release in uh, in cardiology. So that, that's amazing. It's based on we have basically. I mean, we have over 150 physician advisors, and then literally thousands of medical professionals that are sending us cases and feedback and things that they want. And so we just can't build it fast. Th- that's that's telling you something about how this is hitting a chord with medical professionals, especially I mentioned younger ones. But is it an age related thing? Like, do the older docs have trouble playing these games? No, I mean we find that like if they're an older doc, and they're doing laparoscopic procedures, endoscopic procedures, they've got the hand-eye coordination. So generally, we're finding that people of all ages are playing this just like people of all ages play games. Right, right, right. And uh, with nurses and stuff too? Nurses, um, nurses, NPs, CRNAs, everybody, uh, you know, medical students, residents, fellows, everybody's playing. Right, right, awesome. Um, And just like we see, you you know, in the video games industry, right, you have, you know, Everybody is playing. Um, over a, I think forty percent of the of the players of Pokemon Go were over the age of thirty five. Right, everybody's playing in all age. Groups. I was all forty percent of this. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, people let's don't see. even think about it when they're playing Candy Crush. When they're playing, they're playing video games. Yeah. Um, so here, here, this is uh, Palmax. So again, dozens of you know of cases that have been submitted by doctors um, and medical professionals around the country. So this is called this case. Uh, I like this a lot. This one's called Carpenter's Conundrum. Um, so this was submitted by Dr. Kyle Hogarth uh, from University of Chicago. So this was again a real case, like all of these. Um, Kyle, and- we made you hot. <laughs> okay, you're famous now, Kyle Hogarth. He's uh, he's our, he's a, he's um, very well known in the, oh, in the advanced bronchoscopy. We made you hotter ecosystem. Um, so basically, a carpenter was holding a bunch of nails in his mouth while he was hammering, <laughs> sucked one in, punctured his bronchus. Oh. so there's the X-ray, mm. and this one this one one in a million see, shot, doc. exactly yeah. right. <laughs> um, so this one, as you can see, um, you know you can actually earn CME credit for this. Um, so this is what we call in the video games industry a physics puzzle. Uh, so here we've got all the. Uh, so, you know, here you can actually see the nail oh, wow. right, as it's embedded. And so everything's interactive. Everything moves. I can come in here with my endoscopic forceps. And the naive approach, right, in this case is, all right, let's just grab that nail and pull it out. All right. So I can come in here with my forceps oh. and we'll go forward. We'll grab that nail. This isn't going to end well. Back, it's not going to end well. You see it just twangs, right? Like, because it's really stuck in there. Um and, you know, the boogers fly around a little bit, but ultimately this is still stuck. <laughs> and so what Dr. Hogarth realized is the right way to remove this. So the, the, the bronchoscope, you can bend it in one direction, right. right? And so what he realized is you need to reorient yourself. So when you bend the tip of the bronchoscope, it moves in the direction of the nail, ah. right? So this is the physics puzzle. So as I come in here, right, so now I'll reorient myself. And then I'm not very good at this because I'm not I'm – not, uh, a pulmonologist, but as we, I'll go and grab the base of the nail, bend, and remove. Oh, right. how satisfying! So now we've got this right. So now I've got the challenge of removing the nail from the uh, from the lungs. Now I just dropped it because I got it caught on a ridge. Oh but no! Pooling blood! Pooling, pooling blood. blood! Yep. So the first time, right? So the first time when I sort of pulled on it, I. It started a bleeder. So now I'm starting to panic. Do something. So yeah. So we'll suck up some of this mucus. We'll spray with some saline, um, and then we'll remove. Yeah, removing the remove removing. I don't like. I don't like how that looks right now. Removing the mucus is especially rewarding. Oh, suck the mucus plug. Oh, where's my RT at? Here we go. And oh, as we, look and, at that. And the beauty, and, and the whole thing is recreated. Like, we can just keep going deeper. I think this goes to about the third or fourth generation. Wow. Right? Even though we don't have any action, you know, there's no there's no foreign objects down here, right? We don't lose any detail, right? No matter how far down uh, you go into the patient's lungs. And all again, all of this is, again, running on an iPhone. D- 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 this is amazing. Like, every single clinically oriented and non-clinically oriented healthcare person in this country should have this app and should be playing this game just to feel what it's like. So when you send a patient for bronchoscopy for a foreign body removal, you can have some idea of even how to talk to the patient. Well, this is what's going to happen. There's going to be a guy holding an iPhone and he's going to be shouting profanities as he plays a video (laughs) game. Oh, wait, no, it's not like that. It's amazing. Uh, What are you doing there? I'm trying to APC the wound, but I keep getting blood on my scope and I have to keep removing it. You know, uh, can you be sued for virtual malpractice? There we go. Because if so. (laughs) If so, I would not be doing well. You're deep in it. Um, And I will testify against you. (laughs) (laughs) You will testify against me in court. That's right. Um, So, okay, so this cardio, cardio EX thing, this is just now out. So this is CardioX. Um, now, CardioX 
looks a lot different from our other games. Um, and that's because it's visualized under fluoroscopy. Oh, right? wow. So we're capturing the challenges of interventional cardiology on a phone. So in other words, you're not looking at actual tissue because in cardiology, you're not looking at actual coronary arteries. Correct. You're looking at fluoroscopic interpretations of coronary. Exactly. You're exactly. injecting dye. You're bu and you don't even box the kidneys using this because you're not injecting real dye. It's all virtual. Right. Well, we still we still score you based on the amount of contrast. You oh, got use. it. Okay. So, um, but perfect. as you'll and as you'll see, I'm not an interventional cardiologist. So, but you play I'm, one on video. I games. play. Well, I play. I play one in video games, which means that I'm going to be injecting way more contrast dye than a actual interventional cardiologist would, because he or she would know her way around the vasculature, and you know, I just can't picture the maze in my head yet. Exactly. So, so I'm going to keep injecting it. Um, so this is. Uh, uh, so this is an example, and we'll show uh, uh, a range of these, right? So the last, you know, examples that I showed you in cardi in uh, gastro and palm were all visualized under visible light, right, under an endoscope. This is a puzzle racing game, Tilt right? It up a little Tilt it up. Go, this yeah. is a puzzle racing game, right? That is. Um, visualized under x-ray wow. right so you know i can either see the vasculature or i can see my tools but not really both at the same time um so here i'll start with uh, my workhorse wire and as you can see you know so the goal here is you know to restore blood flow to the heart as you can see i've got a bunch of uh, stenosis here it's as we'll discover in a second, it's highly calcified. Um, so now I need to deal with it. So I'll show you some examples of, you know, doing the right thing and, and also doing the wrong thing. Um, so here I'll come in and I'll deploy, um, we'll deploy a PTFE, a covered stent, um, and we'll start dealing with, uh, we'll start dealing with these lesions. So here I'm gonna go and place it um, right down here at the base, at the bottom, we'll inflate it. And boom, so there you can see the first mistake, which is uh, I used a colored, a covered stent, so now I just uh, blocked off a side branch that no longer gets any blood flow. Um, and I'm as testifying you saw also, against you. Exactly, and you saw also when I tried to inflate that stent, uh, the inflation was blocked by the calcification. So now what I need to do is, all right, let's try a different tool. So I'll come in a second time with my arthrectomy drill. This one's a lot nice. of fun. <laughs> exactly. This is so Star Wars, stay on target. I can't hold it, Wedge. <laughs> so now here we go. Um, so as you can see, my tool progression was blocked, so I need to come in with my arthrectomy drill and drill through the calcification and make my way through. But now what I did is I just dissociated that uh, that um, maladhered stent. Um, so what I'm going to try to do is come in with my balloon. Um, I'll come with a semi-compliant balloon, and we'll try to chase that one down, um, and we'll... Uh, uh, we'll put the balloon inside it, inflate it to prevent that stent, that dissociated stent from progressing. Look, look, look at my fists, Logan. I'm all, they're all balled up because I'm tense watching him do this because it reminds me of standing in the cath lab watching them do this. Like that is amazing. So to demo this, my the other games, it's actually I can talk and demo at the same time. This one, it's too hard. You, he actually has to focus. play. All right, I'll I'll narrate. And, uh, no, no, I'm saying this. And, is just... so, and so <laughs> the lesion has no chance against the tiger of the savanna, who will deploy a stent after a, using a drill and showering the distal myocardium with calcium fragments. If the patient survives, which is unlikely, he will be the champion of the world. Here we go. So now we'll come in with our DES stent. Oh wow. Let's inflate there. Perfect. Okay. Success. So now success. Now I've got one more. Let's move around. Let's go back up a little bit. All right. Let's go grab a drug eluding stent. Equip. Place and inflate. Oh, patient stabilized. Patient stabilized. <laughs> life saved. That that is that is really like the feedback that you're getting in real time between sound and music and verbal feedback, and then it's keeping track of what your die and your overall points and how you're doing. So, so yeah, so the the music is actually so what we're doing is we're capturing the challenges of medical practice, the challenge and the reward. Yeah. Of the, we're capturing the challenge and the reward of the practice of medicine, and so we're trying to find those elements that are either really rewarding or really intimidating. Right? right. What gives you an adrenaline rush in the cath lab? Right. Right. And then we amplify that with visual effects and with music to like really capture the thrill of of the practice. Of so, so you're gaming the gamification. You're actually trying to get us to secrete dopamine in response to success and secrete epinephrine, norepinephrine in response to fear and have a real fight or flight and a reward reaction when we're playing what 
is real life, really. Exactly. Yeah. And just, just like you would do, any video game designer would do, right? Right, right. Video game designers are masters of neuroscience. Yeah. And, uh, and so video game designers, it's all about how do you trigger, you know, how do you trigger that frustration? How do you trigger the reward? How do you time that correctly to maximize fun, right? Wow. That's what we're doing. The idea here is how do we capture the thrill and the challenge of the practice of medicine as a video game? Yeah. So anytime during your day, you can pick up your phone and just play through challenge fun cases and try your hand at you know some really interesting content and challenge your colleagues around the world that's amazing and and, and you know what's interesting is I was looking at my cat the other day and her way of playing involves a little hairband that my kid leaves all around the house and she'll pick it up and throw it at me and then I throw it at her and she'll catch it in midair bat it around give it back to me and I realize what she's doing is is the result of millennia of evolution yep. combining two things with this cat. One is an essential skill set to survive, catching mice, catching birds, and fun and dopamine release because she is addicted to this game and enjoys it so much. So when you can combine the sense of play and joy and dopamine in a perfect way with a skill set you can use to actually survive and thrive and help people survive, that's the perfect formula. Exactly, exactly. This is this is how video game design works, right? Real game design. Yeah. Not gamification. Real game design. Yeah, what is, what's the is difference? Built, yeah. So so I'll give you an example. Let's talk yeah. about real game design. So yeah. you were talking about evolutionarily, right? You're observing how your cat learns. Right. right? So mammals have learned dopamine is part of learning. All of these uh, all of these neurochemicals are many of them are involved in learning, right? These are processes that have evolved over tens of millions of years. So think about the first time you played Angry Birds. Yes. Right? What happened? The first time Exactly. You should be doing audio for video games, man. Tell me about it. We actually, so for cardio, we have a we have a dedicated audio and music engineer who's oh, designing what a this job. From, from from yes, what a job. Video game audio engineer. It's a lot of fun. My high school guitar uh, teacher uh, now works for Electronic Arts doing video game exactly. uh, music. Yeah. See, amazing. and it's like there's a whole there's a whole genre of video game music and video game audio effects. It's this is all part of creating that emotional experience. Yeah. And really like creating mood and creating that sense of intensity. And and also reward. And so example, right? So we, were, we were talking about Angry Birds. So so Angry Birds. So the first time you played Angry Birds, what happened, right? You 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 know, you pull the bird back in the slingshot and you uh-huh. fire. Wow. Exactly. And you miss. Uh, yes. Right. And it's super frustrating. Yes. And so a second time the second bird jumps into the into the slingshot, you pull it back and you fire. And it gets a little bit closer, but you still miss. And it's frustrating. And then the third time you pull that bird back in the slingshot, you fire, and it's super rewarding. There are pigs, ex- pigs exploding everywhere. Animations, audio, Suck music. Suck it, vegans. Yeah. You've, got, uh, you've got physics and animations. It's all happening. What does that do, right? That triggers a dopamine release in your brain, yeah. right? Which reinforces the same neural pathways you used on that last fire. That's how you learned how to play Angry Birds, and that's what made Angry Birds so fun. Uh, this uh, is, by the way, the same way your ancestors learned how to throw a spear, mm-hmm. right? You'd throw it, and you'd miss, and you'd get frustrated, and you'd do it again and again, and then when you'd hit it, it'd trigger a dopamine release, and that would reinforce the neural pathways you just, you just used, right? This is one of many, many, many game mechanics and learning mechanics that we use in video games to make video games so engaging and so much fun. You know, you, you've you just managed to make video games, a, just even mentally for me, a serious, a crucial teaching tool. Because what you just said is actually the sum product of all our evolutionary drives. And in this mechanism of learning that can be more effective than almost anything else, like even going to a sim center or doing other things like that sometimes, that's not, at, you don't get the dopamine. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Just because... As you can see, we can recreate reality, right? right? We can build, we can recreate highly, highly realistic patients. Right. That's only part of what you need, right? right? That's almost, it's almost easy to get distracted by that because it's so visually impressive. Um, But what's important, what's even more important than the visuals and the fluids and all that is the neuroscience behind this, right? The neuroscience of fun, right? This... This is why video games are so effective. This is why, you know, my, this is why 
we can build, you know, I build games based on Hollywood movies, right? You'd spend two hours watching the movie. You'd have tens of millions of people. The average player would spend over a hundred hours playing the game, right? Because games are exceedingly good, right? At this kind of, um, you know, at, at engaging people for large, long periods of time. And over time, they're teaching you. Now they're teaching you how to play the mechanics of the game. But if you can do what we do and you can build games that use some of the skills that you might use as a medical professional, right? That's you, that's the best of everything, right? It's fun, it's rewarding, and you're also improving your skills at the same time. Well, and, and, and it's, that's amazing, and that's what gets me to my cat, again, Z-Cat, Z-cat. with two Ts, because one T is insufficient to be a thug. Um, Z-Cat would not be playing games that that were behaviorally evolved because no one's teaching this cat this game. It's the only cat in the house. Correct. So this cat has this instinctual set of games that it plays, and they all seem to lead it to the skill set that it needs to jump from thing to thing, to catch moving small brownish objects. And it's interesting because she focuses on the brown hair bands and things like that, not the very brightly colored stuff. And mm. it's really quite fascinating. So that that convergence of evolution and need and survival and games and dopamine all seem to happen with the cat. And that's what you're consciously creating with these video games. Correct, correct. Yeah. But remember, obviously for a cat, it's very simple. Right. For us, oh, you yeah. know, it's, it's not only there's coordination, there's puzzle solving, right? There's strategy. Um, there are all of these, you know, game mechanics, right, that span all of these different sort of advanced cognitive skills that you need, you know, in daily life and that medical professionals are using constantly in their practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was there anything else you wanted to show us on the demo side? Sure. So, yeah. I mean, this gets, so the example I showed you was a CME case. Yeah. Um, right. So we were talking about, we are talking about learning and, and you know, ironic, like we talked about how effective these, me these mechanics and mechanisms are, right? Very different from We'll say way more effective than watching a lecture and oh, taking God. a multiple choice test. Makes me want to die. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, so how do you get the CME? You do the game, you get a little score, and then there's a click link or something, or how does it work? Oh, no. So once you register, then, yeah. yeah. So within the game, we will, um, when you register, we have your the information, and then when you complete a CME, uh, when you get a high enough score to earn CME, we send you an email. Wow. Um, with, a, with a certificate. Instructions, yeah, right. So yeah. It's all, Got it's, it. all, it's all connected. That's really cool. Um, and, uh, and so this is an example. Um, this is called Perforation Hunt. Um, and this is an example of where things get more intense. So here, right, we're... You know, like we talked about amplifying these things, right? So this is visualized under fluoroscopy, but we've taken liberty, right, with the visuals, with the visual elements to make it a lot more intense. Oh, this, yeah. is our, this is what we call an arcade level. So this isn't a real case. This right. is where, you know, we're really sort of pushing your skills to the limits. In fact, if I don't jump in here really quickly. You're going to die. Um, well, the gonna patient, die. yeah. So I need to jump in here with a covered stent. So as you can see, this patient has multiple perforations in two different locations. So I'm actually going to end up using two guide wires simultaneously here. And I got to go and I got to deal with these perforations. Um, navigate to them. Dude, this is tamponade waiting to happen, my friend. You better, you better save this patient. There it is. All right, ideal acquisition. And then now I'll come in, we'll grab my other wire, and let's go down the other side. See, this is why I need to visualize them before. Here we go. Okay. Back this way. All right. And the music, it's more and more intense as you go. It's thrumming. It's been going crazy. Exactly. Close enough. Perfect. Oh, there I, I blocked a side branch because I Oops. went too far. But we're good. We're good. And so now the next step would be coming in with my. Uh, so we have some thrombosis. So I'll need to come in with my uh, aspiration catheter. And suck some of that out. This is amazing, by the way. Let's see. I'm a little bit far up. There we go. All right. So we'll come in and let's remove that thrombus. Now here you've got to be a little bit careful because if I do this incorrectly it'll embolize um we don't want that that up no and then we've got to go well, yeah there we go okay so and then we've got some more to deal with um but i think we can i think we can stop the demo here and let you people know, play this on I, their own. I just had a crazy thought you're on a plane you fly a lot all right someone calls for a doctor is there a doctor on the plane you could probably stand up intubate someone because you have the fiber optic intubation. Right, I game. can intubate. You, if you had a bronch, a, bronch, uh, a bronchoscope, you could actually bronch someone probably. So remove a foreign object. Remove a nail. Got, uh, yeah, because you know that's a common. On airplanes. On airplanes. Right. Maybe Very a peanut. Common. Probably a peanut. Southwest, stop putting peanuts on. All right, then I've got nothing. Now there's just pretzel, so it would be a pretzel. It would be a pretzel. And actually, that's more chocogenic. That's, that's true. And that might break apart. 
actually might, when and you're trying to remove it. Game physics. Game you physics. So about that. We actually we have a we have a new level we just launched in Palm X where there's a uh, tiny toy and you have to be as you remove it you got to be careful because the toy will actually break apart wow. into different pieces. So it's like a little Buzz and Lightyear so that it, some kids swallowed. Right. right. You got and then you as so as you remove it right you see it starts breaking apart Ooh. and it adds the frustration you've got to pick up the pieces as they it's a lot of fun. It's like. To infinity and be yeah. a little yeah. wing comes off. Uh, what do other game developers think about your game physics, graphics, design, chops, those kind of things? All right. So this, so we're we're using, you know, what we pride ourselves in, right, is we're using the best of video game physics and graphics mm. to the point that actually we, um, this was actually super rewarding for us and the team. So um, we uh, won an award at SIGGRAPH, which is like the big special effects conference across film and games. Wow. Um, so we were up on stage with a bunch of the you know top game developers, right? You know from uh, Lucasfilm and Unity and Unreal and Level X, demoing all of our real time graphics technology. They were dem they actually had a really cool Star Wars demo um, for some cool visual effects that they were doing, and we were demoing this, right? Wow. So I think we made a number. There were twenty five hundred people in the audience, none of them medical professionals. Yeah. So I think a lot of people ended up a little bit queasy, um, <laughs> but we all we all had a lot of fun. So so yeah, I think you know for for game developers, what's exciting about game developers that come and join Level X is, you know, traditionally, right, if you were in the games industry and you wanted to do something that, you know, might help save lives, right, you would have to go into medical simulation, which right. meant you were going to compromise. You right. were going to have to give up on all the game design. You were going to end up making something that looked like a video game out of 1991. I mean, you've been to a system. Welcome to medicine. You've, seen, you've yeah. seen what it looks mm -hmm. like. And so what's exciting for everybody about when they, when they join Level X is you don't have to compromise on any of that, right? We're making intense, um, you know, realistic, but also really fun games. We're really pushing the limits of realism. As you can see, we're abstracting certain things, um, but we're using all the best technologies. Yeah. And so we're able to do things, you know, that only high-end video games are able to do. And so that's why we've been able to attract, you know, our team of game developers includes people who worked on, in addition to Star Wars games, Call of Duty, Diner Dash, Mortal Kombat, a range of games on mobile, on console, you know, some of the top games that, that, that you've played. The people who made those, many of them are now working at Level wow. X, making games for medical it's professionals. It's about time that healthcare got something dope that the rest of the world gets at the level the rest of the world gets it. Not a dumbed down, corporatified piece of crap like uh, any EHR yeah. or <laughs> any you know billing <laughs> software, anything else. We get garbage, garbage, garbage to see actually world class video game design in a way that actually teaches, trains, gets us inspired and releasing dopamine and fired up and anxious when I'm watching you play i'm like ah ah exactly i've seen this go down and and that is that's tremendous so first of all thank you for doing that like oh, that's huge we're having we're having a lot of fun okay you know sam i, I want i want to play this 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 because i'm a kick-ass video game player and you don't even understand how good i am because i was rocking the final fantasy x <laughs> okay i was rocking the mario kart 64 and before you were even born all right so Hand this thing over and let me play. Just okay, so here we go. We have a simple case. We've got one lesion. One lesion. Now, is this an Ender's Game type of scenario? Am I actually fighting buggers in real oh, life in, through an animal? On, a live, on yeah. a live patient? Yeah. No. Are you sure? Maybe. Okay, because my malpractice does not cover this. Okay. All right, good. Let's do this. <laughs> uh, oh, wow. So I can move it around. Dopeness. It's smooth. And then here's a lesion. So... I'm just going to do something. I don't know what. So you can inject dye if you want to actually see where you're going. Let's get some dye. Oh, snap. There's all the little doohickeys. I guess they're called blood vessels. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do something crazy here because I don't care because I know what I'm doing. Bam, 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 bam. Dye. Okay, now I'm going to put this because it's different. It's workhorse wire. And I want an aspiration catheter because it sounds dope. Equip. And let's take that and let's drill. Um, you, oh, you want to drill? I, I, you want the arthrectomy drill. The arthrectomy drill. Let's go back here and get the arthrectomy drill. And I want the biggest one because I want stuff to break. Okay. So uh, now you, you got, yeah. you're on your second wire. So we're oh. going to go. So go oh, drop oh. down. Yeah, yeah. Put you on this one. Okay. I'm going to bring this wire down for you exactly where you were. And mm -hmm. then I can go and go drill. So let's put you on the drill. Okay. There you go. Go nuts. Drill, baby, drill. So now Just you go pull, so pull the drill down. Okay. Down the wire. Uh -huh. There you go. And now it's blocked. <gasps> so now uh -huh. hit go. Go go go, 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 drill, 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 drill. Oh, snap. And I'm going to check in for my flight. <laughs> this is amazing. Dude, that was awesome. Now, okay, I want to... 
let's let's see what's going on. Okay. We got something some on the other side. The other side. I gotta get this wire over here. Let's back up a little more. There you yeah, go. And let's I need I need to see what's up. There it is. Yeah, I can see let's get let's oh, get yeah. right in there. Oh. And so now I've overextended, so let's get back. No, you go you wanna go to wire, so you wanna go past it with the wire and then you'll and then you are threading the tool down the wire. How dare you mansplain interventional cardiology to me, Sam yeah, Glassberg. If it's a, right, if it's a non doctor explaining it to a doctor, what except is that? that I've never touched any of this equipment like you're, you're smarter at we, this than i am I, I actually am not one of the designers on this so so i'm not a, i'm not a game designer we actually we've sent teams of video game developers into the cath lab um it was uh, all pretty let intense. me let me grab a good uh, i'm gonna do this our threat actually i want to do a stent so let's place a stent yeah. so you gotta pick you gotta configure your stents you gotta pick oh man all right Covered, i'm gonna do a, i'm gonna drug do des because i like drug eluding because it has the word drug in it I want a 2.5, and I'm going to make it 30 because this thing looks 30 to me. I don't know what that means. Now, we're going to – where's the lesion? So it's all the way down over there. Okay, so I, I, I got to get – okay, so I got to do this, get it past that. It's not. I got to make it do this? There you go, yeah. You got uh, to pull – you're basically threading it down the thing. So got it. Pull it along till you get to your – To my dingle. Yeah, there you okay, go. Keep so, going, keep going. Uh, there, uh, you go, uh, there you go, there you go. Stay on target. I can hold it, Wedge. Now, let's see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna inject to some dye. Your view a bit so yeah, yeah, let's see if I can do that. There, there we go. So yeah, so you wanna go? You gotta go around that. Corner. All right, so I gotta, I gotta do that. Get to the little, little dingle bop, right there, there and go. then this way. Dun 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 dun. You can double. Uh, you can pinch, pinch to zoom in and out if you need. Oh great! Yeah, let's, let's, let's. There, there it is. All right, now get past that lesion. And, inflate. Inflate. Push that plus button. Hold it down. Boop, boop, boop. See now we're back to position. Patient stabilized. Okay, world. Z Dog MD just saved a life. All right, <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> I only used like I don't know how much dye. Way too much dye. Way too much dye. Way too. So kidney failure. Total. Guess. A small price to pay for the dopeness that is that stent and that arthrectomy. All right, there I did go. it. I did it. That was actually so much fun. I'm gonna be playing this all night. There you go. You got one heart. I got a heart. You got a heart. Ironic. Objective complete. I love it. So can you actually play against other players yet? So um, in some of our other games, we have uh, the ability to compete for high scores uh, against your colleagues. We're going to be adding that to uh, Cardio X. To Cardio X. Yeah. That's awesome. So it's pronounced Cardio X, not Cardio EX. Correct. Got it. And um, Like X like expert. I love it. Now, what this word gamification. So everybody's like, Boy. I'm going to add gamification to my EHR so that doctors do better. What does that mean and why is it BS? Is yeah. it BS? Gamification is, yeah. So um, <laughs> gamification, how do I describe gamification? Gamification is scraping off the topmost shallow layers of video games mm. and tacking it onto something. Mm. So the, the, you know, so it's always like, how do I take something that's not fun, right? That's maybe not even interactive, mm. but we're going to make it fun. We're going to gamify. Like it. your taxes. Exactly. Right. Gamify your taxes. What are we going to do? We're going to put a quiz at the end of it, right? <laughs> and then we're going to give you a badge for completing that quiz, right? And we're going to gamify it. And then now it's all of a sudden going to be fun, right? <laughs> I don't know about you, but... <laughs> Quizzes weren't fun in the second grade, <laughs> and they're not fun now. I don't know when quizzes became fun. Like, oh quizzes are gosh. not fun. And badges? We didn't even invent badges in the video games industry. We stole that from the Girl Scouts, right? <laughs> like, this is not video game design. This is gamification. And 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 this is, like, the example I give, right, is, you know, um, video games for, for books and Hollywood movies. So uh, I did a, you know, uh, did a video game for The Hunger Games, right? So you'd spend... <laughs> I don't know what the tune is. I don't know what that is, but you sh yes, maybe there should be a Hunger Games alter ego. There, there's a dog. there's a slightly famished games is the one I'm working on. Right. Yeah. So so we did a video game for the Hunger Games. Now you know the like I said, the average player spent over a hundred hours playing the game. Now let's say instead of making a game for the Hunger Games, I decided I wanted to gamify the Hunger Games. Right. So you'd spend let's say three or four hours reading the book, and what I'll do is at the end of the book I'm going to put on a quiz. And then for completing the quiz, I'm going to give you a badge, right? <laughs> so what do I do? I go from like three hours of reading The Hunger Games to like three hours and three minutes, right? That's gamification. Now, let's say instead I sit down with real game designers, right, who understand how to capture, you know, the thrill and the fantasy of the universe, right? Who know how to ba the Hunger Games universe, who know how to balance reward and frustration, right? And to create, you know, to tell the stories of the Hunger Games universe, to work with the author of the books, to go and create a 
you know, deeply fun and engaging game, you know, game, right, with strategy, with storytelling, with puzzles, with real game mechanics. That's how you go from three hours to hundreds of hours mm. of engagement instead of three hours you know, two, three hours and three minutes, right? That's the difference between gamification, which is shallow. And honestly, like, I mean, it's kind of like, it's, I honestly think it's kind of an insult to medical professionals and to their entire field when you're like, oh, here, have a badge mm. and a quiz, right? Mm. That's not real game design. Real game design is this. Real game design are the real, like you're talking about, the high production value games that we play for 10, 20, 40, hundreds of hours. That's real game design that understands it's a combination of art, engineering, and neuroscience. As you'll learn at Game Developer Conference, it's an incredibly deep discipline, right? And these are this is real game design. Gamification is just, you know, some cheap shortcut that doesn't do anything. Gamification, more like lamification. Okay. <laughs> That's what I got out of that rant. And I'm, that was amazing. But that. your passion comes through in this stuff, man. Clearly, this is your calling. Like, do you ever do you ever go back to your dad and go, I, okay, I did your thing, but I'm doing my thing and this is my path? And does he recognize that? Yeah. So I think I think, you know, now after seeing our ability to reach hundreds of thousands of medical professionals uh, at the level that we are. I think uh, I think uh, eventually eventually, folks are starting to give up on me going to medical school. How, how crazy is that? You and I are on the same path, actually, because I have to tell the same thing to my dad. You know, we reach like hundreds of thousands of medical professionals every day, and we're changing lives. And, and he's like, but what finger have you put in someone's rectum lately? Hmm? How many fingers? <laughs> well, I played gastro EX, gastro there you X. Go. Yeah, and, you know, I played it. I put my virtual finger somewhere. Right, you did. You did use your finger. That's true. That's true. That's true. Good point. So you so see. So this this way you're you know you're finally finally going to satisfy your father. See, thank you. I feel like I've gotten because you have a beard. You're my therapist now. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm just the evil. I'm just the evil alter ego. Speaking of which, the so psychiatry. What other things can you not gamify but make video games that inspire us? So look. Physicians, medical professionals go into their field largely because of the challenge, right? Right. It, whether it's a, you know, whether it's a surgical challenge, a clinical challenge, a diagnostic challenge, the challenge of being able to afford a Lexus. <laughs> I'm just saying, Lexus. So whatever that challenge may be, <laughs> right? Whatever that challenge, including I guess maybe affording a Lexus. I just you realized could, you, you should could put, make that. You could make that a video game. Account. I was going to put dollars reward. as a reward for every cath you do. You'll want to do more volume. So is that the? Th but the, so the question is: Is that something that doctors really enjoy? No. It depends on the doctor. Depends on the doctor. So for some of the doctors, like we could, you know, we could have it. So now you have to build a patient. I don't think that would be right. Fun. It, the Florida doctors would love it. <laughs> um, please, I interrupted you. You were getting fired up, and I derailed you with my thoughts of money so right so any through throughout the you know throughout the 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 field of medicine right every specialty has its challenges yeah some of those challenges are puzzles some of those challenges are like physics games some of those challenges are first person shooters some of those challenges are strategy and management games all right and so what we're doing is we have this incredible arsenal of game mechanics that have been distilled over 30 years right um figuring out how to make games fun and engaging right and how to Help people basically train them on the game mechanics, um, how to make it thrilling, how to make it, uh, how to make it fun, how to balance reward and frustration. We've been learning this, and now you have all the challenges of medical practice. And so we're just waking our way through capturing those challenges as video game mechanics and video game. Levels. Oh my gosh! So I have the idea for the perfect video game. Oh dear! It's called uh, Doc Vader Administrator X. Oh dear! Versus Doc Vader. Versus Doc. Vader. And so the administrator. This is to train administrators to be more effective tools of evil. So the way you do it is you have them fight Doc Vader, who has a lightsaber that's full of excuses and whinings. <laughs> and so he's like, "This EHR has too many clicks." And then he has to come back with a quip that will disarm Doc Vader. So work smarter, not harder. Click send shoots a beam at him oh gosh yeah you know you know you know there was a lot of excitement around um around the new lightsaber right in the last movie yeah, yeah. Um, kylo rn kylo's kylo he's a nurse kylo's lightsaber yeah and so but i think there would be even more excitement about this lightsaber you I, know i've always wanted to do a doc vader game you know what you and i should collaborate on this even though i own no intellectual rights to anything vader and we can do <laughs> that would be amazing like he comes out of his meditation egg and he's already typing on the ehr <laughs> oh god <laughs> he just pulls his lightsaber oh man the ehr yeah. no this is like eh like you said ehr yeah. is a perfect example right of like not treating doctors like people thank you it's it's the whole you know the whole medical blue the whole like the whole 
user interface out of 1992. Hello. So my wife's a physician, mm. right? She's a pediatrician, and I, you know, I, I I get to watch her spend endless hours in these EHR systems, you know, moving her mouse endless miles, right? And I know, you know, we I know how many years she spent, you know, studying, and you know, you spend most of your life in training, right? Mm. Hundreds of thousands of dollars of medical school debt, right? What to go and sit there and type information into this. I can order a lift on my phone, right? Moving my thumb the minimal possible distance, right? With the fewest possible taps to order a lift here, to pick me up here, right? And it's just countless hours, why, right? And so this is, you know, I, I think, you know, with, with, with Level X, right? And also with, with what you're doing, right? It's like doctors are people and, we, and to be able to capture that challenge in something that's high production value, right? That doesn't look like, you know, that looks like a high quality video game that is using the same technology with the same design methodologies built by the same people, right? High production value. That's what doctors deserve. I love you so much, Sam Glassenberg. <laughs> I love you so much. I love and you too, I'll be honest, like so many of our of our of our audience are gonna resonate with what you're saying. We deserve something worthy of Americans who get health care, which are our patients, and we've not been given it. And it's nobody's fault. Let's just get away from blame, even though it's all Epic's fault. It's nobody's fault. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's 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 the it's a system that's arisen, like we were talking about the Matrix, yeah. right? It's a system that's arisen to blind us from the fact that we are slaves to the very system that has arisen. <laughs> and so the fact that someone like you is coming out with these really engaging high production value was a key thing you said. When we do our videos, part of the reason we spend a bunch of money on the videos, part of the reason we have a supporter tribe to help us fund all this stuff is because we think healthcare people deserve like a world-class music video. Exactly. They deserve it because they work so hard. They've sacrificed so much. And honestly, if it helps inspire or teach them or or, or have them wake up and, and start a grassroots movement with us, then that is worth every penny of it. But yet, like you said, we get 90s level user experience. And <laughs> I, I always say it's like, you know, the, self, the, the EHR is like the 90s car phone. Like yes. It came out yes. and you're like, damn, dude, this car phone's dope. I can make a call from my car, bro. <laughs> and then you try to use it. It's just like rotary dial and like losing signals. Yeah, can't get a connection can't ever. A connection. Super slow. A horrible interface because you're driving and holding the phone, which means now you're focused on the phone instead of driving, which is the primary reason you're in the car. I mean, the parallels don't stop and won't stop Sam Glassenberg. And this is why we've been we've been passing we've been sending around Z Dog videos at the company since oh, we awesome. started that's because awesome. like find because it's it's so rare, right? In 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 med to find, you know, high production value content, right? That is as funny as, you know, high production value as, you know, visually and auditorially appealing, right? As what you would otherwise be watching on YouTube or playing on your Xbox. Yeah, and, and this gets to the point of like, we tend to gravitate to each other, people who are doing similar stuff in spaces. And I think in healthcare, we're starting to see these bright spots yes. emerge. You know, like we had Suki on the show, they do a, a virtual assistant. We, we, we've had groups on the show that are really trying to do exactly what we're talking about. And we're gonna continue to shine lights on those kind of organizations, like what you're doing. Now, you, you guys, how big is your organization now? We're, uh, just past 60 people. Wow. And are you recruiting? Are you trying to hire? Are you doing this? Kind nonstop. Of nonstop. Nonstop. So, yeah, I mean, the company is the company started three years ago. Wow. And so we've been growing like crazy and we are hiring all over the all over the place. We have I mean, think it's a it's a game company that has around 40 video game developers and then folks from digital health. We have MDs on staff. We have biomedical engineers on staff. We're working with over 150 physician advisors like at all times you've got I mean literally our office is filled with doctors either they're coming in to test out the latest game to stand over an artist's shoulder and be like oh that should be squishier that should bleed more or playing you know playing early versions of the games to give us feedback like this is all happening in the context of a video game studio so how can my uh, tribe help you can they go to your website Oh, right. So visit level-ex.com or just we'll download the apps out of the app store, right? GastroX, PalmX, AirwayX, um, as debuted here, CardioX. Um, download for free, play, send us feedback, send us interesting cases, send us ideas of things you'd like to see, um, send us ideas of, you know, of cases, of products, of skills. We love to get that feedback from our audience. And as you can see, based on the feedback that we get, that dictates what we build next, right? Whether it's 
our next application, our next game, or new game features and content that we build into our existing games, right? So the whole advantage of being on a phone is we can we update these things every few weeks. There's new cases, new content, new features. So just because there's something not in there today, we could go and build it and then deploy it to hundreds of thousands of your colleagues tomorrow. That's super exciting. So you're going to get about a million messages from my fans. They want a disimpaction app. They want to know, <laughs> I want an AR where I have a patient on the table and we're rotating around and I am figuring out the perfect angle for the enema. And when that fails, I want to escalate to the finger and I want it to be a medical student finger, not my own finger. So we're going to need to bring in a med- so if you bring can, in a medical student, you yeah. hold the medical student's hand. That's right. One hand and the other hand is in the butt. Mm. So if you can make that happen, sir, I will be grateful. How about how about you make the music videos okay. and Level X will make the video games? That's a deal. <laughs> <laughs> this has been like so much fun for me because again, as a nerdy video game player, as a medical person, everything that you did was releasing again scores of little dopamine molecules that are making me all jittery and now I'm going to need to go smoke crack just to calm down. <laughs> and so I want first of all I want to thank you. Second of all, your calls to action to the audience are to go to level-ex uh, to the website and you can get information on if you want to join as a team member, if you want to help advise, if you want to have uh, send messages, but really just go to the App Store on whatever phone you're on and download the app and play with it and yep. use it and get CME and CE. And this doesn't just go for doctors. It goes for pretty much all healthcare professionals. Correct. Right? What, what would you say is the next um, big uh, big step for you guys as a company? How, do you, how are you gonna make a living doing this? Or, or, do you charge money for it? How, how does that work? Right, so everything is free. Got it. Everything is free to the audience, yeah. and that includes, uh, that includes the CME content. Perfect. We wanna make the whole idea here, we're on a phone now. Right, you don't need a five hundred thousand dollar simulator in a, you know, fifty million dollar sim center. It's available on the phone. It's available for everybody for free. And what we do is we we do interspersed within the content feature products. And so it's an opportunity for you as a medical professional to try out a product totally opt in. Got it. So you can try out in a video game. You can try out. You know, you can understand how a certain product works. You can understand why you might want to use it, and you can play around with it. Totally opt in. You can see it. So here, I'll I'll I'll, I'll demonstrate. This is our Airway mm-hmm. app. Um, so this is for uh, this is for anesthesiologists and EMTs and nurse anesthetists and so on. Um, and so we have again, you know, dozens of rare, difficult, interesting cases mm-hmm. that have been submitted by doctors around the country. Um, and we also have cases where you can try out certain products. Show me this AR thing. Like, what do you, how do you, so you're going to display this Mac blade. Some company makes it. It's opt in sponsorship. So, in this particular case, right, this is, uh, you know, so this is your traditional Macintosh laryngoscope. So, this is your standard of care. This is the standard Macintosh uh, laryngoscope. And now, what I can do is just using my phone, I can place a virtual patient here on the table. Wow. So, here we're live in the studio, and I've placed a virtual patient here on the table. And the challenge is I need to visualize the vocal cord. So as you can see, he actually casts a shadow on the table. He's lit by the lighting in the room. But in order to do that, right, there's this little tiny cone around the vocal cords, right, that are set a little bit far. So now what I need to do is I need to strike what's called the rugby pose, which is this awkward position. (laughs) Speaking of awkward positions. (laughs) There we go. So I have to strike the rugby pose, um, and I need to hold there long enough in order to visualize the patient's vocal cords in order to actually insert my endotracheal tube. So now here, as I hold there, you can see I'm inserting my endotracheal tube. And if I look away, if I lose visual on the cords, it stops advancing, right? Because I might, I might puncture something um, or do an esophageal intubation, start filling the stomach with air. So there we go. So now I've successfully intubated the patient in 46 seconds. So now when I place the patient again, right, this time, place them right here. And now you can see I have a beautiful view of the cords from any angle, right? And so here I have a beautiful view of the vocal cords. I can see I don't need to hold his mouth nearly as wide open. Um, and as, and, uh, and as I insert the endotracheal tube, right, I can see, I can have a nice view of exactly where it's going. So I make sure I don't puncture anything or intubate the esophagus. That was solid work. It's like uh, it's like Inception over here. I love it. Right. So this is an opportunity to try out different products um, from different companies. Again, just like you would, you know, walk the expo floor at a conference, right, and try out different products. Here, you can do it, you know, on your phone. That's awesome. Awesome. So, 
I get it. I get it now. So this is actually tremendous. And it's actually not entirely different than what we're trying to do with our own show when we have sponsored uh, 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 guests on and we're trying to highlight these interesting things, but it's entirely opt-in. People know when it's happening. So this has been insanely awesome. <laughs> like, And I'm excited because I'm going to be at the Game Developers Conference with you in San Francisco hanging out. So yeah, so I'm you know looking forward to having you join us at Game Developer Conference. Um, at Level X, we have, we've been sending for three years, we've been sending video game artists, designers, and engineers to medical conferences um, to oh, learn Oh, that's about gotta go these. well. Oh yeah, so that's, yeah. I mean, how the best way, we're about to go do a gastroenterology app. The best way to ramp up 15 game developers on gastroenterology is you send them to the gastro conference. Oh my gosh. So this is what we do all year round, but once a year we flip the equation. And what we do is we bring a group of very forward-thinking, forward-looking uh, medical professionals to game developer conference, right? This is where all the action is happening on the video game side. And so what we do is we walk around the show floor and we meet with companies to get you, so you can see what is the cutting edge of video game technology and video game development so you can tell us what we should be bringing over from the video games industry, right, to help medical professionals. So we really sort of flip that around. So I think that's gonna be a lot of fun. That's exciting. We're gonna get to try out the latest VR tech, the latest, uh, the latest game engine technology, the latest art tools. It's going to be great. Sweet, um, sweet. And with, yeah, so, you know, when it comes to bringing uh, video game developers to, uh, every time we bring video game developers to medical conferences, oh, interesting things happen. Oh, um, so I can't imagine. So I remember, so we, we talked about, you know, so you want to bring, you know, you want to ramp up a dozen game developers on gastroenterology. So we'll bring them to the gastro conference, right, to Digestive Disease Week. Luckily, we're based in Chicago. All the major conferences take place right in there, Chicago. Right there, yeah. So um, one of our lead game, video game developers, uh, we had gotten a lot of feedback from doctors. We needed to include the argon plasma coagulator, right? That's what you picked when we played, right? The laser. The laser. You gotta, <laughs> you've got to have the lightning gun. It's more right. of a lightning yeah, gun. Yeah, like exactly. Force, not force lightning. A, force, right, lightning. Force, lightning. force lightning. Force lightning. Right. Doc Vader. So, exactly. So um, we've got to include the lightning gun. You've got to include the argon plasma coagulator. So we were looking around. You know, So he was like, all right, let me go check this out. So we're walking around the, the show floor, right? And he's looking for, you know, one of the companies that makes the argon plasma coagulator. And he finds one and uh, it's awesome. But what's even more impressive than the argon plasma coagulator is the simulator that they're using to demo it. Now, like we've said, I, I could show you a bunch of examples of like video game you know, looking way more simulators always look terrible, right? right like right. they, like we, like we, like you said, they look like video games out of 1995, yeah. right? You know, um, and yet this was by far the best virtual simulator we had ever seen, and so literally it looks like an Xbox, except the controller is the colonoscope, right? Is the duodenoscope, and as he's twisting it, you can see it's updated on the screen, looks super real, and. There's no blood, right? So there's fluids are hard, so there's no blood. But when he cauterizes the tissue with the argon plasma coagulator, the smoke looks super realistic. You can actually like see, you know, like in a really good video game where you can like see smoke particles spinning, like it looks super sharp. So Andy, our developer, goes nuts because we've never seen a simulator this good. Wow. And he goes, what is this? Is this, you know, is this Nintendo? Is this Unity? Is this un what, what video game technology? Unreal is Engine. Is Unreal right. Engine. Like, yeah. What video game technology? Is he asking all these questions? And it's a sales rep. So he doesn't know. So Andy's like firing all these questions at him. The sales rep's like, I don't know the answer to any of this. Let me get the engineer. So he calls over the engineer and Andy starts bombarding him. What's the physics behind the particle system? And da 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 da. And the engineer is again like confounded because it's the engineer who made the device. Right, right. Not the engineer who made the, the simulator. It's not the simulation engineer. So Andy's bombarding him with questions until finally the engineer goes, you do realize it's a pig in the box, right? And he's like, what are you talking about? He goes, before the show, <laughs> we take a slaughtered pig and we cut out its intestines and we sew it into the inside of the box. And it's only good for three days because then it starts to smell. <laughs> Step one, put a pig in a box. <laughs> Step two, <laughs> cut a hole in that box. Oh my exactly. gosh. So think about it. You're a video game developer, right? It's 2018, right? And We've solved this in the video games industry 15, 15 years, years ago. ago. And for doctors- They have to put a real pig. There's a pig in the box. Oh my gosh. And so we all, we all the level, we have all these stories in Level X that all sort of follow the same arc, which is you start with this like, aha moment. Aha, I can't believe there's a pig in the box. That's ridiculous. Followed by this like moment of, I'll say like, you know, the pit in your stomach when you realize, well, wait a minute, this is an argon plasma coagulator. 
you're using this to seal bleeds that happen, you know, a meter inside the body under an endoscopic procedure, right? All of a sudden you nick a blood vessel, it starts bleeding, you've got to seal the wound. But the dead pig intestines don't bleed. So the first time you use this it's on not a bleed yeah. in an emergency scenario is going to be on a live human being, mm. right? And so that's the moment when, you know, the video game developer realizes, whoa. What we're doing matters. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Ah. Exactly. Oh. And, yeah. and so the, the metaphor is just like we keep encountering over and over again. We learn how we, we discover how doctors learn, right? And we keep, you know, more often than not, we discover metaphorically speaking, lots of pigs in boxes, right? <laughs> Where it's just like, oh, we as, you know, as muggles, right? Picture physician, picture physicians learning, you know, or doc or medical professionals learning on these advanced simulation platforms and complex. It must be like the matrix, it must be like the holodeck in Star Trek. And then you actually see it and there's a pig in the box. It, 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 yeah, it's more like that the deck on a third rate carnival cruise. Uh, <laughs> wow. That, okay, I'm super inspired because I think what you guys are doing is going to, we're going to, we're going to, you know what? That should be your motto getting the pig out the box. Right. And turning it into a robot pig with real blood simulated. That pig. looks right. Yeah. Yes, it is the year of the pig. The pig. My right. daughter was born in year of the pig. She's now uh, going to be 12 this year. So that's how I know every 12 years. That there pig, we go. That pig come around. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> anyway, speaking of coming around, Sam Glassenberg, brother, it's been such a thrill, man. I'm excited is... to I am excited to keep working together because I think the Z Pack is gonna be like, Yeah, I'm playing that game and thank you for all you're doing to make it a happier, healthier place to be a clinician in this world when all we get from Epic and others is a pig in the box. <laughs> we out, brother. Thanks. Thank you. This is a lot of fun. Take Appreciate care. Appreciate it.